watch as this baby gasps for air. One in 200 newborns with whooping cough will die. They can't breathe in. They just continue to cough and cough and um, will turn blue. We can protect ourselves from these diseases. But vaccination still ignites fierce opposition. The greatest lie ever told is that vaccines are safe and effective. But vaccines have been plagued by reports of nasty side effects. We've had 44 children present with febrile convulsions. So do people now fear a vaccine's side effects more than they fear the disease itself? to the beautiful coastal town of Byron Bay. This is where you come to embrace your inner hippie and see what alternative living is all about. But does this laid-back lifestyle come at a cost? This part of New South Wales is known as an alternate lifestyle area. Sometimes with that goes a distrust of Western medicine. And so people believe that public health and pharmaceutical companies and doctors and other immunisation providers are collaborating in some conspiracy. If people in the community don't get vaccinated, it can lead to disease outbreaks. This creates danger zones in areas with low levels of vaccination. Some periods they can drop down to 50%, wow. or very close to 50%. So does that translate into an increase in disease rates? We've seen twice the level of disease in, in Byron Bay as we've seen right next door in Bowen. I was baffled by the extraordinary low vaccination rates, so I decided to hit the streets of Byron to find out why. And I really think that the vaccinations actually don't help with letting the body naturally build its own immune system. I just feel that I don't really want to put anything unnatural in him because I just don't feel it's natural, yeah. No, I haven't been vaccinated. What's the reason for that? Um, well, my parents did not believe in it. And like, I know someone who has been vaccinated and got Down syndrome from it. It surprised me how much misinformation there is out there about vaccination. No vaccine comes without risks, but the majority of side effects are minor. OK, Mum's going to hold you really tight. Give Mum a cuddle. It's common to get um, a bit of redness or swelling at the injection site, a bit of pain that lasts a couple of days, a fever maybe for a day. But they're minor and they go away quickly. Rare side effects are something in the order of one in hundreds of thousands. An allergic reaction, for example. It's really important for people to be able to weigh up this risk. When I get on a plane, what are my chances of surviving and landing OK? When I have my child vaccinated or myself vaccinated, what are the likelihood of a serious side effect? We all go on planes and we should all be vaccinated. Now, I'm not here to mince words. Vaccines work. They protect us from diseases like smallpox and polio. These are diseases which maim, paralyse, even kill their victims. But to sustain this protection, we must achieve what we call herd immunity. Herd immunity is the means by which those who are vulnerable but not able to be vaccinated can still be protected because so many people around them are vaccinated and are immune and so whenever a germ comes into a community it keeps coming up against full stops, against barriers and it can't get to that one or two vulnerable children. For herd immunity to work, uh, in terms of quite a few diseases, we need 95% immunity. So it's really quite high. Vaccines not only protect you, they protect your community. And that's why immunisation can be called altruistic. It's not good enough to say that you've been vaccinated as a baby. Older children and adults need boosters. This has been a timely reminder that I'm due for mine. Remarkably, only 12% of adult Australians have had a whooping cough booster. 
Then. The problem is that most people are too young to remember the devastation caused by epidemics in the early 1900s. There were children dying left, right and centre from diphtheria in the 40s, paralysed by polio in the 1950s. And since then, there's been many children who've still died from, from whooping cough, for example. If you don't see it, out of sight, out of mind. How do they weigh up what they see in front of them, a serious side effect, which occurs rarely, against an infectious disease they've hardly even heard of? Dana. Dana, Dana who? Dana Elizabeth McCaffrey. Dana was born perfectly healthy in 2009. We'd made the decision to have a third child. Um, we just moved to a new area, so for us it was, you know, an, another step in a, in a new life. But Tony and David had no idea that moving to Lennox Head in northern New South Wales was a potential danger zone. I had never been warned about whooping cough. But at the time Dana was born, the rates of notification were seven times what they were the previous year. There was one day that I dropped James to school. I had to take my newborn baby Dana with me and walked into a school and just completely unaware. It's still not known how, but Dana came in contact with someone carrying pertussis, the bug which causes whooping cough. She was about 11 days old and um, started to get a, a blocked nose and I took her to the doctor and that's what they thought it was, just a cold. But things turned bad quite suddenly. Dana was airlifted to Brisbane Hospital in a critical condition. I heard Dave scream and I ran up and we just stood there, alarms going off, everybody on deck pumping your child and as they count down every minute and they get to a minute and they're yelling at you going right now she has permanent brain damage now she has this now she has that and you know it was just it was yeah, horrific it's horrific it was horrific it's still your worst nightmare mm. all from something that was described to me as just a cold mm. and five days later my baby's dead it was it was just that a quick? shock mm. yeah At 11 days old, Dana was too young to be vaccinated. She had to rely on herd immunity for protection. But tragically, it failed her. It's horrible to think, I killed my child by taking her into that school. It took me months, if not years, to be able to walk through the school gates again without that voice in my head. Mm that feeling of regret and it's just that feeling of if I had simply stayed home that day she might be alive very curious and interested in the way I've been here for 25 years now treated a lot of children with vaccine preventable disease there's a certain anti-authority anti-mainstream view the idea that in their heads that vaccination is is not a good thing it is something which s stems from their alternative lifestyle uh, and then in affects everyone around them. The anti-vaccination sentiment has been spurred on by bad publicity around vaccine side effects. A report in 1998 by British doctor Andrew Wakefield linked the MMR or measles, mumps, rubella vaccine with autism. I was living and working in the UK in the late 90s when the autism theory came along. It was really rubbish science, but it caught people's imagination and particularly the anti-vaccination group swung in behind uh, Dr Andrew Wakefield and said, oh, this must be true. It took many years to prove his research was bogus, but the damage was already done. <laughs> it made people think that vaccines were unsafe, that their child could be dreadfully damaged. And so for a time, immunisation uptake in the UK of the MMR vaccine went down to about 60%. This hasn't stopped the anti-vaccination lobby from drowning out the science. The messages are wrong. They have no truth in them, yet they're plausible. And people who aren't sure could say, well, oh, on balance, I'm not going to vaccinate. And that's been happening a lot. It's only around the corner, if we don't keep immunisation rates high, that epidemics can come back. 
The McCaffreys have since had another baby named Sarah. Tony tells me she's worked hard to ensure every new parent receives a warning about whooping cough. That sticker now is going on every baby's health record book saying watch out whooping cough is about. Parents and grandparents get a booster now. Um, just those words may have changed my life. So even if this saves one life, it's been worth it? Oh, yeah. Well, the reality is these diseases kill and that when they turn deadly, medicine can't stop them. There is no cure. Immunisation is one of the best defences we have against deadly epidemics. The fear now is that the tide of people reluctant to get vaccinated may see the re-emergence of diseases we once thought had been eradicated. Let's hope not.